Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we are going to be looking at one of my 100 day project pages and creating visual reminders in our art journal. So I'm starting off in my junk journal which is where I've been doing my 100 day project and you can see I've got some very messy pages here. I knew I wanted to do a double page spread because these two pages were very different I just thought it'd be nice to have sort of a bit of a flow and I'm just sticking down some collage bits and pieces so the tissue you can see there is just some brown craft tissue that I stamped some stamps on they are the stamps are from Dark Room Door which is an Australian company I've got some little bits of map I have got some um, text just to sort of tie in with the text on the other page I've got a blocked paint <laughs> tube which is why I'm trying with the needle to get the paint out and I've been in this sort of red phase at the moment well sort of burnt red kind of phase this is sort of Sedona and um, fuchsia at the moment um, paint from Dina Wakely which I've been using a lot of I'm also using some of the cheddar which kind of replicates the color of the Sedona because I couldn't get it out of the bottle and I'm just sort of wiping away some of the extra paint so I put the cheddar sort of all over and then because I knew I was going to wipe some of it away just to give a little bit of a visual pattern in the background. It didn't work so well so I'm going in with a paler colour, right, this one's carnation and just doing the same so you can see I get more of the pattern left behind. So this big stencil is from Stencil Girl. Um, it's a pretty useful one because it's got lots of different patterns on it. I quite like stencils where I can get a little bit more bang for my buck and, and get um, a few different things at once. So because I'd lost some of that red before, I'm just putting a little bit extra on. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm sure you can probably see I had really no idea where I was going with this. I just needed to create for creating sake. I... Um, I don't know if I've got it on at the moment um, but I'm still in my healing process from my arm I've taken off so you probably see the scars and stuff um, my hand was a bit sore but I needed to exercise it and um, I've just been in a bit of a funk not artistically but just with the whole healing process and, and what was happening so um, I was finding that a bit difficult one thing that helps is, is uh, retail therapy <laughs> really shouldn't um, but I did get this brand new set of stamps these are well they're not actually brand they're new for me because I just bought them but they're from Tim Holtz from la the start of last year maybe the year before I think they're called the glitch set which are sort of very um, steampunky technology lots of dots dashes machinery type stamps and they're brilliant for mic making in the background which I really really loved so um, I just created that background which I really liked in the end but I didn't know what else to do so I added in the um, picture of the face which I'd stamped onto tissue paper and I'm just painting it the way I, I normally paint faces so um, for those of you who follow my channel have seen me do this a lot um, for those of you who are new to my channel, I paint faces in weird and wonderful colours. I do have videos on my channel sort of explaining it more in detail. But basically, um, I tend to use yellow, magenta and blue, which are bright primary colours. I use my yellow as my lightest colour, my magenta as my mid-tone and my blue as my darkest tone. The reason I do that is so visually I can see where the tones and shades should be. Um, I found when I try and do proper skin tones, um, I really struggle with it. Whereas using very contrasting colors, I can sort of actually get it more blended, more normal looking, so to speak. I'm just using also a little bit of night paint to just really deepen up the edges and put the shadows in. So one of my big tips for painting faces is um, everything's going to look alien until you put the eyes in. This will suddenly start to look a little bit better now that I've actually got the whites of the eyes in or make it look a little bit more human, even though it looks still looks alien-esque. It will still look a little bit more human when you put the eyes in, which is why a lot of artists actually choose to focus on the eyes first and get those correct first. 
Um, so when they're painting, it looks like a real person. I choose to put the eyes in last because um, I know what I'm like. I tend to get paint everywhere, so I leave the white to the end. Um, and it's just personal preference. So I'm just going in and putting some sketchy lines in. Again, you can see as soon as you sort of add the black on, it starts to again become more lifelike, so to speak. It is supposed to be abstract. It's not supposed to be lifelike, but you know what I mean. Um, my other big tip for painting faces and finding out shadows and so on is actually go and look at makeup videos, particularly makeup videos where they are teaching you how to highlight and contrast on your face. Um, I love makeup, but I don't actually wear it very often. Um, but I'm always astounded by how amazing they can make faces look completely different once you've got the right shadowing and highlighting on. So if you want to know where to put your shadows and highlights, go and watch some makeup tutorials. So you can see also um, in the background where I am putting in my extra paint. I don't like to waste paint. So if I've got a page in my junk journal or even in my normal journals, I just chuck the paint on and um, it gives me interesting pages to go in in the future to add stuff to. So it's a, it's a good way to break that white page or the fear of the white page. Um, it gives you some really cool backgrounds and sometimes you know you might use them just as is and sometimes you may decide to paint over them. That's okay, you've got something on your page to start with. So as I was doing this or while I was doing this page, this quote has been, I've read it on the internet, I think it was in an interview with Elizabeth Olsen because you know I'm Wonder Vision mad and there was lots of interviews coming up with her. Um, but this one really resonated with me because it's just something that I need to tell myself constantly at the moment or I don't tell myself constantly but it's something I really need to and it's that no is a complete sentence you don't have to explain yourself if you're not comfortable with something or if it's just not right for you no is a perfectly valid answer to a sentence so um, obviously that comes with caveats and of course now I'm trying to sort of undermine myself but for me when I was doing this this is just really important for me to tell myself and that's what my journal's for like um I suppose I've, I've explained this before on the channel but um I write journal for about three different reasons first is obviously because I love doing it it's lots of fun the second is to practice making art and you know use all my tools and stuff and have fun get better at it as I always say practice makes progress the third reason I write journal is for my mental health it is my relaxation, it is my regulation, um, it's how I keep myself on the straight and narrow. And with all my health stuff that's been happening recently, that's been a huge thing for me. It's been really, really important. And I've actually found since my hand has come out of cast, um, it's actually been even more vital than before. Um, I think I, thought that as soon as I came out of cast I'd be cured, I'd be healed, I'd be back to normal and I'm not. Um, so there's still a lot of limitations on what I can and can't do. Obviously you can see that I'm able to use my right hand and I'm, I'm working on it. All this stuff is great hand therapy for me um, but it's just the mental side of things is, is really huge and I think I've found when I've been doing this that I compartmentalised a lot, you know, oh, I'm in cast, I'm in cast for four weeks, you can deal with this four weeks. I never actually dealt with the initial trauma of the, the injury in the first place, I've sort of just pushed that down and I just deal with what's in front of you. So um, this little reminder on my page was really important to me. It was okay for me to say, no, I can't do it, you know, I can't hang out the washing, I can't cook tea, I can't make the kids lunches. You know, no, I just can't do it. Um, and for a people pleaser like me, it, that's been a really powerful message and it's been a really tough message for me to try and get across because it's just not within me. So all the journaling you can see me writing on this page is me sort of processing what I was doing. Um, it's really, really messy. Uh, it was just me getting everything out of my head onto the page as a reminder of what I needed to do. So I can go into this page of my journal now and I've still got that visual memory of, you know, why that quote is so important to me. I may not be able to read the journaling that I wrote there, but as when I look at that page, um, all those memories come flooding back of me creating that page. 
and that's what art journaling can be it doesn't have to be you don't have to be deep and meaningful on every page that you do but you may come across some pages that you go to and you go oh, I remember how I was feeling on that day when I did that hmm interesting why I chose those colors so um, yeah that's part of my journey I hope that spoke to you until next time bye for now